everybody. I'm Ellen Fisher, and we're here at the Center for Spiritual Care with Jill Kerwick for her show, which she's going to tell us about. Hello, Jill. Hello, Ellen. What is the title of this show? It's Heightened Awareness. Okay. Oh, that is a good title for it, because all of these pictures for you are a moment of heightened awareness. So you try to capture in your work, a moment of heightened awareness that you had. Right, it's there from memories that I will, um, something is very meaningful to me or surprising to me, and then I'll go back to my sketchbook and I'll make a very tiny little sketch mm -hmm. of it. And then if I like it, I'll make a smaller painting. And then if I like the way that's coming out, I'll make a larger painting. I'll mix my colors up first, I'll use colors from other paintings maybe that I liked, so it's not local color. Um, so that's a little bit of the process. And so you must be very aware of your surroundings at all times, and do you carry a sketchbook in your pocket? I made a drawing on the way here today. Oh, really? Yes. Oh. Um, I didn't have my sketchbook in the car, but I had a piece of paper. So, were you in the car when you were sketching, like at a light? Or I something? did actually stop. I didn't do it right, <laughs> right then. So, you see, these are memories. So, the memory mm -hmm. is um, not factual. No. But it's almost more realistic in a way because it's what I remember. Well, what do you sketch then to to cue you into what you were thinking about to that memory? Well, how do you how do you make a sketch of a memory? That that's going to remind you of that memory, of that moment in time that you experienced? Um, well, it's something that something happens and it just clicks like, that's really unusual, or I just have to get that down, and if I get it down, then it'll tell me something. Okay, so it's a very loose outline or a loose sketch. Right, and not everything works, but a lot of things start to say, oh, I see why I, why I remembered that, you know, why I wanted to remember it. And perhaps sometimes the same experiences or situations come up and they become stronger as you experience them. So yes. it may be yes. a whole string of experiences. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I think of that a little bit when I think of your painting Couples, uh -huh. or Couple number three, I think it is. It's a very small rooster, a little banty rooster, as my mother used to call small self-important men, <laughs> along with this very big buxom Hen, yes. Uh, in this picture, tell me about that memory. Well, this one little rooster lost uh, his mate. Oh dear! And she was a very big chicken, a big hen. And mm -hmm. then um, he found another one, another big hen. <laughs> and uh, I just where think... do chickens go to meet? <laughs> well, we, we have a farm in New Jersey. Oh, oh so these okay, are our, okay. These are our chickens. So this was right around the watering trough or something. Well, you know, they're around for a long time, and then when he lost his one mate, then, you know, he waited for several months before he made friends with this one, and then they just hang around together. So, you know, I sit there and I watch the animals for a long time because I find them Fascinating. I know you have a lot of animals on this farm. Yes. Including yes. many bunnies and what else? Yes. Um, too many donkeys, five horses now, mm -hmm. and um, peacocks, and they're guinea hens. Yes. So, yeah. How many chickens do you have? How many, how many mm -hmm. potential girlfriends did this <laughs> rooster have well, available? Well, it changes, but mm -hmm. we, and that one um, hen was about nine years old. Oh my, he likes older women too. It just didn't matter, you know. Well, he was about seven himself, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's, yeah, she wasn't robbing the cradle exactly. Right, right. Oh, good. Right, right. Or the incubator, I guess. But then they just hang case. around, they stand next to each other, and they're, well, he, he'll protect his girls. He has several girls. Oh, yeah. isn't that yeah. lovely? Yeah. So, so yeah. for me, for the, for the moments, I'll watch them, watch them, watch them, and then all of a sudden something happens, and I'm not really sure why I have to remember it. But mm -hmm. I just say, let me try do a drawing of this and see how it comes out. And then later, I'll do some more research. I'll yes. do some looking, maybe try to take some photographs mm -hmm. or add something that the sketch is missing. 
I, I really like that one, I guess, because they are so companionable. And I mistook the larger chicken for the for the rooster, which I'm yeah, sure people do. They but, do all the time. Yeah. Uh, just as in life and and right. and other bird relationships and in humans, it's opposites attract, and yeah. you never know what you'll get. Yeah, that's yeah. the fun of it. Yeah. So a lot of these things are about time because we're talking about mere moments, and we're talking about memory paintings and the. Memory painter that comes to mind for me is Grandma Moses, whose real name I can never remember. She was also a memory painter. She right. would remember things from long, long ago, maybe not from two weeks or three months, but right. from her childhood. But yours are memories that happen a little bit more recently right. than your childhood. I'm thinking of another um, naive artist, Ma mm -hmm. Maud. I think she's. Okay. They made a movie about Maud. It was fabulous. Okay, what I kind think of it was work? I think Canadian. Mm -hmm. And her, I, I love her work too. I mean, I'm not a naive artist, but I kind of wish I was. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to go back to naive yeah, you once, just, you, once you. You can't. No, yeah, right, you right. just can't do that. Right. After a certain point. Right. But it it still can influence your art and be very admirable. Uh, it's something you admire. Who else do you admire as far as painters go that you think? have had maybe not an influence on your work, but just an influence on how you think about your work? Well, I like Charles Birchfield. Mm -hmm. I like Fairfield Porter, Maureen Galace, um, contemporary artists I see on Instagram that mm -hmm. are in their 20s. I, mm -hmm. I find, I collect art off the computer. I keep it in a folder. So I just take a screenshot and then I have a folder of a thousand pieces of art. Mm -hmm. So, and I categorize them either by their, by the artist's name or by inspiration or by color. Mm -hmm. So I like Bonnard. I'll steal his palette, yes. some, his palette from his painting sometimes. The artists whose name I'm, names I'm recognizing do have sort of a playfulness about them. Uh -huh. All of the, the ones that you were mentioning that is a little bit, um, not naive, but but naive in a good way, childlike right. or, or playful. I think playful is the best word. Interesting, yeah. 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 Well, one another playful thing, and I think a good example of how you do a small painting first and a large painting later would be Gustav. We have uh -huh. a 10 by 12 inch painting in here and a 30 by 30 inch painting. So let's look at the smaller one first because that's the one you did first. Right, right. And? Why? Well, it happened, I was on a beach mm -hmm. in Costa Rica and it, it happened, this little bird came by. It was not in the scene that you see now, but um, this is sort of the way I remember it because, you know, my head moves around. So I'm looking at the ocean and then I'm looking at the bird. <laughs> and so my mind put it all together. Exactly. Yeah. And so that's how I remembered it. So maybe I'm always composing a picture because I'm so influenced by movies and I look at art all the time, mm -hmm. and so maybe I'm constantly composing and trying to make what I wanted to remember it to be. To tell the story of right, where you were. Right. And, and then the bird, the, the title is from a friend of mine had a bird that would come to her window all the time, and mm -hmm. she has a cat also in the house, so the cat would jump up on the counter and the bird <laughs> taunting, so okay, then she yeah. would name Gustav because the birds um, are birds of habit and they always come to the same place all the time. Mm -hmm. So she called him Gustav because my friend is German and she picked a German name. And what kind of bird is this called? It's a kiskity. A kiskity. I, I think that's a beautiful name for a bird. It's a beautiful bird with all the yellow. It's just... And that's a male bird, I suppose, that you have shown us. Or I are the females know. and the I male quite look, similar? I think they're very similar. Oh. I think the size is what differentiates them. Oh, okay. Well, let's look um, if uh, at the larger painting. Now, what is the difference? I can't see much difference in these two paintings, the, the larger 30 by 30. A little bit different Yes, 30 proportion. by 36. It's, oh, 36, yeah. it's the same proportion. It's the same proportion, Excuse so me. I scale it up one inch to three inches. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes that's a real surprise, like with, with the zinnias, it's a big surprise because the zinnias are actually larger than life size. Mm -hmm. But... Um, with, and the bird, of course, is larger than life size. Yes. Um, but the difference is maybe subtle because mm -hmm. I'll um, maybe ch change the value of the color or I'll change the warmth 
or the coolness mm -hmm. of the color mm -hmm. to make it more to my liking. I suppose, that too, that a strong memory is always larger than life than it was in life. And perhaps if something really tickles your fancy as a small painting, right. you're, you're willing to make the leap into the larger one because the memory needs to be big. Yes. Everything in it about it should be big. Yes. There's something very cinematic about your, your paintings as well, and you just mentioned film and the movies composing sets and things. I think one of them would be 5.30. 5.30, is it just 5.30 or 5.30 p.m. is the title of the painting. Right, right. I guess it's 5.30 p.m., but it's, uh, I just titled it 5.30. Um, wh where that memory came from, I was down in Costa Rica, and the, they, have, they don't have uh, a gloaming. Mm -hmm. They have such a short pier window, because it's so near the equator, that oh. the when the sun goes down, it happens quickly. It just bang. Yes, and so you you have to catch that moment in yes. your mind and at it, right at that time. And this is just after the sun has gone down. We don't see it in the sky. Right. And so in another second or two, it's going to be very dark, and we'll see the running lights on the boat. Right. 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 It it sort of reminds me, I think, of a movie. Um, a little bit because we would see the camera on the beach looking out at the boat and then we would expect to zoom in yeah. <laughs> and see who's on the boat and what kind of drama is happening there. So right. it's almost almost a teaser yeah. of who is that out there? What are they doing? Are they going to dump a body or well, are they going to yeah. meet, uh, yeah. uh, meet a lover somewhere? What, what right. is happening in this scene? Right. And a lot of my things, like you, I think there's just one person on the boat and mm -hmm. a lot of the work is... I kind of think about it as either as longing or belonging. And like, I'm at the beach mm -hmm. looking at this. Should I be on the boat? Wouldn't that be nice? nicer? Mm -hmm. um, hmm. Not being yeah. satisfied with where you are at mm -hmm. the moment. Right, longing or belonging, yeah. Yes, yeah. I, I, well, I like this one in distance too. I think in, in some of my own paintings, I, I like to put a barrier between me and what we're looking at, that you can only see it. The only way you can experience it is through sight. Right. Because there's right. too much between you and it, or some actual barrier. Yeah, and, and I like that you brought up me. that you had another story because I think that's so important. That mm -hmm. I mean, I could tell you what I what, what my experience is, but mm -hmm. I want to leave it open ended enough for the viewer to say, "Well, this is what I'm thinking," and I love that because some people have said to me, you know, <clears throat> that your paintings are a little scary, and I just uh -huh. think that's kind of funny because. They're, it's not really frightening to me. It's Well, they look very benign, but I think yeah. the scary part is all the possibilities yeah. that can yeah. be going on yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, in, in the picture or in that right. distant thing. Right. It's like Sherlock Holmes was riding with Watson on a train into the country, and Watson was saying, oh, look at this glorious day. It's beautiful, quiet country. People are so gentle out here. And Sherlock says, oh, no, no, no. He says the most horrible things happen in the seclusion right. of the country. Right. It, it puts on this charming face and evil things lurk behind that. Well, my experience. favorite director ever is Alfred Hitchcock. So. Uh, well, I was just thinking so there yeah, you go. With, with the yeah. painting we were talking about right. is that he will sometimes show you a very benign scene, but yes. everything that leads up to that, you feel a sense of dread. And right. I think that maybe your, your friends are catching on to that, yes, that say probably. that they feel this sense And I try dread. not to censor myself too much. Like a lot mm -hmm. of the imagery that I've chosen, if I choose a sunset or I choose zinnias, you know, 10 or 20 years ago, I might have censored myself and said that would be too sentimental or ah. nostalgic. Mm -hmm. But at this point in my life, I can paint anything I want and I can use any colors I want. I think that that, uh, yeah, and we always think when we figure things out like that, why didn't I think about that 20 or 30 years ago? Yeah. Well, I, so I would have censored myself. It's so. almost too simple. Yeah. Um, well, let's look at one of your Xenia paintings. You have a smaller one, and it's called Butterfly and Bee, mm -hmm. and you have a larger one. So let's take a look at the smaller one first. Okay. And what's happening in this picture? It does look like a very happy thing, but what is lurking behind that? flower bed or at the corner of the, the house. Well, that was a moment when the, you know, when I was looking at these flowers and then a butterfly landed and a bee landed. So mm -hmm. that has kind of the couple connotation. But yes. also I saw these zinnias and I said, you know, they're, they're pretty much 
done for the season. So I've got to do mm -hmm. it now. I've mm -hmm. got to, you know, uh, paint this now. And I like, I just love zinnias. They're so um, hardy and they are last a long time, which, mm -hmm. which is, I'm very practical when it comes to They're very common. Those kind of things. They're very down to earth. They're colorful. They're all very different. Mm -hmm. And um, well, yes, I, I really think of a countryfied flower. They're like a hollyhock. You know, they're uh -huh. they're something that's very common, very vulgar, I guess. Oh, I, I guess be. that's a good name for them because they're so common. Yeah, yeah. and it, it does take a lot of bravery. But not the giant zinnias. I don't think the giant zinnias are common because I love the mm -hmm. the wiggliness of their stems. No, those those are vulgar. Oh, the, oh, those are the vulgar ones. Okay, they're I like, like taking that. common to yeah. the tenth yeah. degree. Uh -huh. But but as far as being a countryfied flower, a flower of sentiment, of memories, of childhood memories. I remember uh -huh. zinnias from my high, childhood. Uh -huh. Because again, you know, kids can run through a zinnia garden and, and not not trample anything. Yeah. And so you have the larger one. What's right. the difference between the larger and the smaller zinnia painting? Well, it's a challenge, you know, when you're using a brush that's tiny for making a 10 by 12 mm -hmm. so that when you're using a when you're making a larger painting mm -hmm. and I want to have the same look that it's done easily yes use a bigger brush so use a bigger brush also the way I tackle the abstract shapes in it mm -hmm. I don't want it to look fussy I right. want it to look fresh mm-hmm Mm -hmm. So that was my, and so when I'm painting smaller, um, you can have that rapid thing going on. But when you're painting larger, it's planned. So I plan it as mm -hmm. best I can. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll make a plan, I'll mix up all my paints, and then I'm like a, in an, leading an orchestra. Okay. So that I can have that same where I'm not thinking so hard and, you know, but I want to just like, I don't yeah. want to think when I'm there. So I want everything to be set, like kind of like a chef. Yes, also. Yeah, you know the recipe already. Yeah, so I'm like my assistant, like a sous chef. So I'm my assistant <laughs> days before, and I and I gesso the painting, uh, gesso mm -hmm. the canvas three times in addition to getting really smooth canvas. Mm -hmm. I'm, now I'm using uh, gessoed linen, mm -hmm. and I'm even gessoing on top of that. Yes. And so I try to make it as easy as possible in order to, uh, so there's a lot of prep work to do before. I think you're very successful in the, the ease of execution in the large ones. And again, in this one, you know, the bee is like this big, you know, yeah, or, yeah. or bigger. So you feel a little bit like a Lilliputian looking up at the zinnias, whereas in the 10 by 12 one, you're sort of in control, you know, you're still a human being. And in the big one, you're sort of got a bug's eye view a little bit. So funny, you mentioned Lilliputian because at the opening, um, someone said to me, you know what, this reminds me of Gulliver's Travels. Uh -huh. And my previous work related to that, but that was such a memorable movie for me when I was about oh, okay. eight years old and I saw that. Mm -hmm. I went back and looked at the movie mm -hmm. and I think it was an opera. It was a black oh, and white see. opera, which is, I can't imagine an eight-year-old watching it, but it was so shocking to me the whole idea of you know mm -hmm. someone giant or little people right. so i think it's all it's been the discrepancy like, between their sizes is what right so astounding like just like alfred hitchcock is so memorable for me mm -hmm. gulliver's travel is another one that's so memorable when you watched me. the film again as an adult were you a little disappointed or did yes you imagine yes yes it's like yes. going home again uh, anybody who's grown up and goes back home after a long, or, or goes into even a relative's house that you remember as a child, you do feel like Gulliver. Everything seems so small and, right. and not very special, and right. yet you have these big, big memories. Right. So I think that's a little bit what you're approaching in your paintings, is how do you take something that's small and make it really have a lot of impact, a lot of memory? And right. I think the cleanliness of your style hmm. in working and uh, it is really good too because it's like a, a sharp, clean memory, much better than an actual memory, which is all fuzzy around the edges. Right, it, it, yeah. it has a lot more power to affect you, hmm. I think, than a real memory. Huh, yeah. 
I think another couples here, we're talking about couples, the birds, that, I mean the butterflies and the beads and the birds and the birds. Well, we have the human and the human in, um, I think it's called, oh my goodness. Friendship. 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 Well, of course. Yes. Yes. <laughs> what a good title. Yeah. This shows two women sunbathing. Uh, again, Actually under, in the shade. <laughs> oh, the shade bathing. You're right. Yes. That's where I would be, actually. Yes, me I don't, too, yeah. I don't get out in the sun like that. But you have two female companions. They're basking in the shade yeah. underneath some extraordinarily large plants. And instead of us being a bug, now we are Gulliver looking down yeah, at the Lilliputians. Right, right. And those are almond trees. Tell us about this, this memory and this scene. Yes, um, it's like a, my favorite place to go. Um, it's a place called Escon Vida Beach. It's Hidden Beach. Mm -hmm. and Costa Rica, Costa right? Costa Rica. Okay. And they have these alemandras trees, which are almond trees, mm -hmm. and the macaws, or the red lapas, they, they are up in the trees, and they're eating the almonds one by one and dropping them down as you're, as you're <laughs> under the tree. But it's mm -hmm. just such a special, special place where um, the heightened awareness happens all the time because... Mm -hmm. I'm, it's like I'm more relaxed. There's not as much stimulation as there is sometimes, mm -hmm. with, especially in New Jersey or New York or Florida. It's a lot more distractions, right? Yes. Um, I don't watch television down there. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, there's a lot of things. I, I read every morning religiously, mm -hmm. and I read so much, and I think, well, why don't I do this more at home? But there's so many more distractions. And I'm in the yes. car more here. Being in the car is a lot. Yeah, it seems to be that we always spend a lot of our time in the car in right. the, here. Right. Are, are those any particular people, the, the set of people under those trees? Well, it really is um, um, friends, um, but it's also taken from an Albert York mm -hmm. painting, who's one of my other favorite artists, Albert York. And what painting, what is that painting like? You know, it's just a memory I have of the painting. So, <laughs> so yeah. you painted a memory of a memory. Did right. you go to that painting to see how the yes, people yes. were configured? And in then that I one? posed the people and then... And then, yeah. yeah. And well, then now a lot of your past work has played a lot with the juxtaposition of large to small, especially in your photographs where everyone says, well, photographs don't lie. And yet you'll have a, a giant chicken and a woman that comes up to its, its ankle or something. Um, so you're, you've, you sort of brought this over even in a more subtle way into your paintings. Right, right. Well, thanks, Ellen. Yeah. Thank well, you. Uh, the one more I want to talk about is the one called Endless, which uh -huh. is behind me. And I insist that that's a self-portrait. Okay. Is it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> you didn't admit it when we were, were talking well, about it's earlier. Well, really, I try to be more universal in my work, that it would stand for woman or stand for person. So, mm -hmm. Well, but, it, does, it does do yeah. that. But okay. I guess since I know you and I know what you look like right. from the back, okay. so why is it endless? We have one that's a very specific moment in time, which is 5.30. Why is this one endless? Um, because it's, it's an endless pool, and it's also looking out into the horizon. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I thought that was... It's one of those moments in which you feel eternity. Yes. It's all around you, yeah. stretching out. And it, it only lasts for a second, but right. you have that feeling. Oh, good. Thanks, Ellen. It's nice to know what that feels like, isn't it? Yes. I, you feel a little special. I suppose yeah. other people feel like that. Do you, think, yeah. do you think that some other people have these same feelings? Or would elicit, these paintings would elicit those feelings? I, I, I hope so. I figure mm -hmm. every do, everyone does, but... Well, I do, so yeah. I guess it's well, artists, working. Yeah. It's working. Okay. Well, thank you for talking today, Jill. This, this is a wonderful show. And, thank you, uh, Ellen. Always good to talk with you. Thank you very much. Okay. Again, this is Ellen Fisher with Jill Kerwick at the Center for Spiritual Care. See you later. Bye.